We're back for another exciting episode of The Spicy Life. I am your relationship expert and magnetic matchmaker, Spicy Mari. And on today's episode of The Spicy Life, we have the amazing, the fantastic Isaac Key. Wow. The crowd goes wow. wild. You love that intro, right? <laughs> wow. <Okay. laughs> thank you. I thank you. I feel like it was a bow. Okay, yeah. Yes, thank round of applause. Everybody. Round of applause. Like, I love you too. Yeah. So, there we go. <laughs> sure. So I have Isaac on the show because today's episode is uh, posing to women, are you the tequila or are you the chaser, right? Who are you in the relationship? And this is good for the fellas too. And I want to give you a little bit of background about Isaac and why I felt like this eligible bachelor, wink, wink, said muffin, needed to be on the Uh show. Isaac Keys is a former NFL player turned actor. He started numerous TV shows and films, and particularly the series Get Shorty on Epic's three seasons. He's currently the host of Straight Talk No Chaser, where he discusses with his co-host, Gerard. Am I saying it right? Gerard J. Gerard. Uh, yeah. Gerard J. Yeah. Real relationship conversations like you would have with your friends from a male perspective. Sure. So... Isaac, you currently are doing a, another podcast, uh, and I love the name of it, Straight Talk No Chaser, and it was perfect because I wanted to do an episode around how do you know which role to play when it comes to mm-hmm. getting what you want from your dating experience or from a relationship. But first, mm-hmm. before we dive into the juice, Isaac, uh, okay. I always like to warm my guests up with some spice breakers. So okay. we're going to do a little bit of the spicy dish where I give a little news and gossip. But first, you're going to warm up to me and let me know, when did you first fall in love with yourself? Hmm. That's a good one. Um, first fall in love with myself, I have to say, uh, it had to be an experience where... That's a deep question, Spicy. Like I I'm trying to eat dough. That's and a what I'm thinking. So it's like, it to you in advance because I wanted to get some authenticity. I know, but I think it's because you know. I think I honestly don't feel like I really fell in my love with myself until, and it's gonna be deep. Um, kind of recently, and I say this, I've loved myself, but I didn't always know myself. Yeah. So I've been through all the endeavors, you know, high school, all the you know different things you go through, all the other things you do in life. You know, you just go, you're coasting. But I think it took recently to where I had to really spend more time. Actually, kind of like right before Corona and all, like last year, I went through a, a, a breakup in my relationship and I had to really focus on me. Mm-hmm. And I had learned so much in a relationship, uh, not just relationship, a marriage. So I learned so much in that. I was like, you really didn't know yourself. Mm-hmm. Or you probably wouldn't have made some of these steps that you had made before. Or you didn't know yourself and you did a disservice to maybe the other person. Mm. So I started really vesting in time within myself and like knowing what my hard lines were, my boundaries and knowing mm. like, I, this is the love about yourself. This is what you need to know about yourself so you can love yourself and be able to love others. So yes, that's more than a spicy icebreaker. That's, <laughs> I think you just, you just, think you just push everybody into the pond all of a sudden. Yeah. So I think I found my love more so recently. <laughs> I'm more woke now. So yes, for sure. I love myself. I'm really in love with myself now. I love that though, because you are a testimony to some men, right? And even what we can Mm -hmm. call, you know, some divorcees who may be feeling challenged in, you know, having had not what they thought the outcome or maybe success in what they maybe perceived the relationship goal to be and still being triumphant afterwards. It's more about, you know, how Mm -hmm. you recover and I wish I could speak in, you know, football terminology. Um, but I do know that there's this thing where you guys like win and lose and you throw the ball. And if you catch it, that's good. And if you don't, that's bad. Like it's, it's more about yeah, like, something like that. That's not, called a, that's not called a rebound. That's basketball, right? I, what do you guys call it? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, you just described a lot. I mean, so, but <laughs> win and lose. But I think what you're saying is that, you know, you have an opportunity where the quarterback may throw the ball, you can catch it and you can score a touchdown. Or there's other opportunities to you know other things that happen where you're, you're so close, but you get tackled right before you score the touchdown or you get stopped. So the adversity that you go through, I think, is how you overcome that. So they always say in the same football, it's, a, it's, a, it's not a sin to fall down. It's a sin not to get up. So, that part. You know I mean? Right. So it's just about what are you going through in life? Can you learn from it? Or are you going to let it use you, you know, in a negative way? So which way do you want to come out of it? And, you know, I look at it that way. And I think, I mean, yeah. So I think it's just about how you overcome it, what you learn. Learn yourself. That's where you love yourself because now you know yourself more. You don't be so hard on yourself when you go through things. You're a human. 
that part. And I love yeah. that you can even, I love, this is so motivational right now because I know that there's a lot of men too who tune in that are happy to hear another man, you know, from bro to bro hear you For say sure. this. Um, but women also, because it gives us hope knowing that like, we're not the only ones focusing on growth that men do as well. And it can be just as important to you from, you know, learn from past challenges. I appreciate your voice and input, which is why I want to talk to you today mm -hmm. about male female dynamic. Okay. Um, and when it comes to how you view the female species, when it comes to you are right now, what we consider an eligible bachelor, uh, mm -hmm. you have been in a relationship and, uh, been a work in progress in your growth and what you've learned from that relationship, but we need to hear your voice and hear your opinion. And you are giving information out on your show. And it's something that is vital to helping us as women too hear from a different perspective, right? I can give all the relationship sure. advice in the world, but I love having different guests on my show that are able to give a different point of view based on their personal experiences. Gotcha. So as someone who uh, has been through some hardship and overcame when it comes to relationship, that's very relatable to all of us. What I want to know, and being in the position of today's episode, are you the tequila or the chaser, is <laughs> why do you think that there are so many women who are intimidated to speak to men? I think uh, women can be intimidated to speak to men just be out of the fear of rejection. Um, I think it's rejection. It can be some parts of insecurity, but I think that it's been set up that way. Mm -hmm. It's been set up that a woman is, is has to look a certain way, the beauty, uh, the essence, the walk, things like that to make an attraction for a man to come approach them. So now if she puts that, that puts her in more of a, a decision-making position. But now when she approaches someone else, now the decision is being made on her. And how is she going to be able to handle that? Can she handle that type of rejection or that interaction or whatever it may come? And I think that's something that you have to build up to be able to handle as a woman. Um, some women have already built that and, and created that type of energy where they can handle it. Like, I'm good. Okay. I'm not sure where they started that journey to help build that, that type of, well, of tough skin or resiliency. Um, but others have not. And you can tell because they're like, no, I don't want to do that through anything in life. It's kind of like a fear of the rejection part. Yeah. And it's not just approaching men. So it's about, I think it's a mind state that you set yourself into to allow yourself to be able to make that happen. If that makes sense. Tell me what signs you see. So you said that, and I, I love what you're saying right now, because you're saying there's certain women who have built themselves up for that. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like in 2020, right, we are promoting, and I've always been an advocate of us being uh, women who create opportunity for conversation, mm -hmm. to engage, to see if there is a mutual interest there. But you said that we are now putting ourselves in a position to experience the rejection. And it sounds like for the longest, of course, men have always put themselves in that position. Does that, is that a part of why you guys are so capable to fall and get back up because you've been that, positioning yourselves. I think that's part of it. I mean, you got different guys. Like, because Maybe it helps women to understand the guy's perspective. You got different guys. You got guys I call shooters. They're going to shoot at everything that's possibly coming. They like, they, they play the odds. <laughs> they may be 10. I got shot down, you know, <laughs> seven times, but three, I, I'm in there. You know what right. I'm saying? Like I got, th I got three. So those are called shooters. Some guys like to just sit back. I'm more of a person that I, I sit back and I observe. I may see a woman that I'm attracted to, but I observe her movements and her behaviors to kind of see if that's somebody I could still want, want, want to approach. Mm -hmm. And I've talked myself out of it sometimes. I've also been in a position where it's like, damn, I don't really know how to approach her. Or mm -hmm. I may be intimidated to approach her as well. That's things that go through your head as a, as a man. But then you're like, okay, fuck it. Excuse my language. But, you know, like, let me just no, go see. It. And then you, th you got to look at what angle. How do I approach her? She gets approached all the time. Is, you know, how do I approach her? So these are men. That's why sometimes you come up and you like, oh, it hit. Sometimes, you know, the, 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 the line, well, not line, but the interaction, the introduction hit. Sometimes it's like, oh, okay, well, <laughs> have a good night. And then you have the guys that get angry because they approach the woman and yeah. they're like, oh, well, F you then, forget you. I don't, you know, whatever. Oh You've been looking at good anyway. Yeah. And so women go through all of that. But then and you be like, oh, my God, I can't believe he talked to me like that. Or <laughs> why this girl talking to me? You know, you get you like that. And dudes be sitting there receiving that. Like, well, I don't even know why he come over and talk to me like that. But then when nobody talks to you, you wonder why nobody approached you mm -hmm. as a woman. So I'm just saying, if you look at it from the man's perspective, the things they have to go through, it's going to be different ones. I can't speak for every man. So when you look at it, now you bring it up to the woman's side. 
it's like, do you want to be approached? Are you making yourself approachable? Yeah. And it's going to be some that you want to approach you. It's going to be some that are not. But express the interest if it's somebody that is approaching you. And, you know, if not, be honest. I feel like I'm at an age bracket in that range where it's like, just be true to yourself. Mm -hmm. You interested or are you not? And if you're not, then, you know, just say so. And then thank you. Have a great day. I love that you're speaking to the conversation that men have in their head before they go up and speak to a woman. It's a lot of thoughts that you're thinking about, a whole game plan that you're coming up with before you even make that attempt only to potentially be shot down. So I can only imagine, <laughs> well, I work with women all the, all the time who express right. to me their concerns and fears of what that process looks like. And you said, uh, and you touched on the intimidation. Talk to me about what intimidation looks like or when, you, why you're intimidated. What's the experience or the element of what intimidates you of why you would not go up to her? What makes her look more approachable or, hmm. or the signals that you're looking for where you're like, no, nope, I can knock this out the park versus, you know what, let me fall back because I'm not going to win that one. Sure. I think um, for me, you know, I, I, and I, I mean, this is honestly speaking, like some men like, be scared to say intimidation. Mm-hmm. You now everybody feels some sort of intimidation. Now maybe levels to it. Yeah. But it's just, you know, you'll feel some sort of, I think it could be like if I'm observing and maybe she's being approached by a lot of different people. So now it's like, okay what's going to separate me from all these different people that may be approaching her at this moment. Yeah. So I have to find my angle or, um, the fact of, you know, that it's like, okay, well maybe she's, she's with somebody. So you're like, okay, I don't want to disrespect that mm-hmm. situation. Um, I think it's, it's still the intimidation factor is like it says levels, but I think it's just, how do you, where you are as well in your own mind? Like as a man, like where are you in that mind state? What, what space are you in right now? Are you in a real confident space right now? Or you feeling like, ah, you know what I'm saying? Like, ah, I got a lot of stuff on my mind right now. You know, if I can really, what to say, you know, what kind, what I'm going to say when I get to it, right. you know, you can play them games, but like anything, you can talk yourself out of something just by playing all the games in your mind. So I think what helps with that whole thing is just being still confident in your walk and you're confident in your stand. So that's the growth as a man you have to become to have. So it's like, no matter what, whether I'm in jogging pants and a t-shirt mm-hmm. and a hat or whatever, or I'm dressed up, dressed down, I still have a confidence about myself that exudes off to the people around me. So now I have presence. I have, um, I come in a room and it's, it's like, people can feel that in a sense. Where and do I you... think that also transpires to women. Women need to use that as well. Well, that's what I was, so, okay. So yeah. sorry to cut you, but to that point, where do you get your confidence from? Where do you pull your confidence from? I pull my confidence from affirmations to myself and through the levels and adversity that I've been through, what I've been through and self-talk like people do self-talk, but sometimes it's in a negative place. Mm-hmm. All my self-talk is going to be positive. Now I may have a negative talk go to my head. I'd be like, I right, get up out of there, you know? So, <laughs> and, you know, and I, yeah, get up out of you trying to come in. You're not invited, you know, or, you know, it's maybe, or maybe a reflection like, Oh, okay. There's something you need to work on, but I get my confidence from myself. Um, and just the work that I put in for myself. And I think that's what majority of people have to do because now we're also in that stage where it's like we're living in a, a, an age of validation. Yeah. Everything that we're doing right now, we look for somebody to validate it for ourselves. How many likes did I get? What was your response? And, oh, do I need to respond back to that? It's a validation. Well, did I, am I cute makeup-wise? Is my face, you know, women's face do beating or right you know, whatever it may be? Yeah. Yeah. So it's a say the validation, but that's all good. But you got to have a foundation already in order for you to either receive that. Because some people can't even receive compliments. Some people say, hey, you look great today. Oh, well, you know, I haven't really been feeling well. And, you know, this is not even my best outfit. If you don't say <laughs> thank you and receive this compliment and move on. Speak to <laughs> besides, that. You know, Speak to yeah. that. So I, maybe some women haven't necessarily done all of the work, right? It's why they mm-hmm. seek help. It's why they come to the Spicy Life for sure. coaching. Um but you just hit on something when it comes to a telltale sign when someone can't take a compliment. Give me other signals that let you know that maybe a woman's not confident. Um, downplaying. There may be a situation where it's just like, you know, like the self talk Well, I could, I, I wanted, I wanted, I wanted to try to, I want to apply for this new job. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't think they're going to necessarily hire me because, you know, I, I haven't finished my, my degree. I haven't, you know, uh, put in necessarily to work forward. It's like, or I'm not necessarily ready. Okay, well, maybe those are facts. Mm-hmm. But are you doing things? And just the fact that you're you're depleting that 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 confidence bucket right yeah. now 
is already putting you into a zone that that's not even going to come into your universe. But if you come into say, oh, I'm applying for this yeah. job, I may not be ready right now, but I'm going to take this course here and then I'm going to set up a game plan, a positive game plan for what you're doing. Um, other things can be, you know, just women just kind of just, I mean, just the comments. I think it's always just the comments on their own, the self-talk that they have with themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think if they can change that, I, I learned it a long time ago. Like when I was playing football, it's like I play football and I, sometimes I'd be self, have self-doubt. But when I started developing the confidence because I was playing with higher competition and things of that nature, I would be like, well, shit, if I just believe I can do it, I'm better than what I was doing already. Like, yeah. it's just the thought of saying I can do it already made me run a little faster, jump a little, you know, or play a little better. Yeah. So I just, I learned at that place, it's right towards the end of college, that just my thoughts will help me in whatever endeavor that I'm having. And I think women, it is, it is hard. It's hard for everybody. It's hard for men, too. We have a lot of stuff on our shoulders. But for women, I understand because the validation, you all do so much to be called beautiful or <laughs> those nature. And like, so it's like you, you want that validation, so you do so much. So you have to really be your number one fan from the jump. For sure. Be the number one fan from the jump. And that's, that, that shit would trans, translate over to everybody else that around you. And you actually uplift other people by having that type of energy, I believe. And it's part of what makes us so attractive to you guys, though, is that yes. we do the work and that we, when we love on ourselves, that makes us, ooh. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh -oh. <laughs> Almost died over here. No yeah, COVID, no, no COVID. You're trying to hold it COVID, in. Don't hold COVID, it in, let it out. COVID, COVID free house, COVID free house. <laughs> <laughs> part of what makes us so attractive <laughs> is when you find a woman who is in love with herself, right? From a healthy standpoint, when she's done the work. Yeah. But oftentimes we want to be able to show our vulnerability. We want to sometimes be able to say our thoughts out loud. And I think what you're expressing though, is not that we can't be vulnerable with you or mm -hmm. show that we have some fears or some self doubts, because that's natural. I think what True. you're saying is in the maybe like initial dating process, you can hear how a woman talks about herself, how she talks to you, how she talks about her goals, how she talks about her appearance, how she talks about her values or the things that are important to her. And when she speaks negatively about them, that lets you know right there that she maybe has a negative thought process or that she's not as confident as what you are attracted to. Our thoughts are extremely powerful. Next to our emotions, next to our beliefs, behaviors, our thoughts are what is the beginning of that formula that controls everything. Right. And because so when it comes to you saying like that you have, you know, these affirmations that you tell yourself, it's powerful to have these affirmations and these conversations with ourselves because that's the intrapersonal work. So there's interpersonal skills and then there's intrapersonal skills. The intrapersonal right. is the work that you have with other people that, or I'm sorry, the interpersonal work is the work that you have with the work that you, the relationships you have with other people. The intrapersonal is the conversation that you have with yourself. Mm. Part of people, majority of the time people think that because they get along well with other people or they have good relationships that they're doing well, but without doing the intrapersonal work, they don't even know what they're projecting. They don't even know what, what they're giving off that forms a certain perspective. So if the woman does do the intrapersonal work, you are more likely to feel like you want to develop more of an interpersonal relationship with her. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah. So it's, it's part of our own like self-defeating prophecy where we have this negative thought and now we start to turn you off because of it, because we feel that way about ourselves. Yeah. Talk to me about what are key things that women says that turns you on. Um, what things make you like, key, mm, dang, she's confident. I'm, I'm into her. I think it's more or less when she, uh, when a woman says, I'm going to get this done. Just like things like that. Like it could be some of the jobs like, okay, okay. I see the setback. This is what happened, but I'm going to get it done. They're not going to hold me down. Just things like that. It may not be in their words, but it's like that building up of themselves because then it allows me to feel like I still have a place to help build you as well too. And um, I think it's just when the goal, goal oriented, having goals set, not necessarily, you know, just like, you know, this is where I, I want to accomplish this goal here. And, and, you know, and, and just having a, a game plan for what I feel like for what they're feeling like they want to do in life, but also um, 
confident in how they move. And I say, I, it's, I, sometimes I think it's more than just words. It's like mm-hmm. just their actions. I think the actions in this week, because that's what we're looking for anyway. When it comes down to it, it's like people can say all they want, but are there intentional efforts or actions behind it? Yep. So I can listen to you. It's just simple as like saying, you know, I'm going to go to the gym today. Oh, I'm going to go to the gym. It'll be two weeks later. And you're like, you didn't still went to the gym. And I just look at the action. <laughs> but I'm just saying, that's the gym. We all do it sometimes. You know, it's, it's real. But where are the intentional efforts and actions behind it? The actions behind what you're saying. Um, I love yeah. that. Yeah. And you um, were raised by a single parent, right? Your, your mother, you said? No. Um, my you parents, had both parents? My parents, yeah. Both parents. Oh, both 49 parents years. Together? 49 years see, they've been together. That's my bad. Because you had mentioned... You know what it was? I'm, I'm preconditioned. You had mentioned how independent your mother was um, sure. and how much you loved that. Automatically, I assumed, oh, he was raised single parent home. Yeah. And that's actually no. not the case. Your parents are still together. So ooh, even, years, even yeah. better, speak yeah. to that. How did your mother create space or room in her independence to allow space for your father to work his magic or to support the relationship? Well, you know, first off, I'm going to say this. Me being a child, I never knew all of the, you know, in the, in the, in the linings and, in the, you know, right. all the things that went on in the relationship. So me seeing from as a child outside looking in, um, I think it was that my space, my father was very goal oriented and he knew where he wanted to try to take the family and things that he wanted to do. And he just, my mother was very good at, you know, you know, maybe not agreeing with everything he wanted yeah. to do, but still being a part of it. She was also the type of person where, you know, if there's something to get done, she would do it herself. And I, when I say that, it's like, I've been in households and families where parents like, well, the kid is there to do what I want them to do. So bring me, bring me a glass of water out of the <laughs> kitchen and here, or bring me that remote that's over on the table, those type of things. Or I need you to run to the store. I need you to get this, 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 and this. My mother was never like that. Mm-hmm. She would always, you know, just handle things that she needed to do. She just made sure I did my chores. I did those type of things. And she was just a, a stronger type of woman. It's not to take away. It's just the way she was. I take away from any other woman, any other household. It's just the way she was. So as I came into it, I think what that was called in the love language is acts of service. Mm-hmm. So when it came into later on, certain acts of service, I was like, why do you want me to do that? <laughs> like you could do it yourself. Oh, wow. And, and, and I had to, And relationships. I had, I had to learn that acts of service was not a forte of things that I was drawn to. Mm-hmm. I'd rather do for you because I want to do for you. But when you want me to do something for you to so something I'm still so simple that you can do yourself, I feel like you just want me to do it just to see if I would do it. Wow. And that's how my thought process worked. You think it's more of a challenge? Um, or you were interpreting it as more of a challenging you versus I them really it, needing you to do it? I felt it was, though, and I learned, as I learned now, it was more like you're putting your possession. You're, and it's also a flip side of uplift thing. I'm like... I want you to be able to do for your own self. Mm -hmm. I want you to need me. I want you to want me. So if you need me in a situation for us, like to do these things and do that thing, then that means you've never been able to do them either or or try to do them self or work with them. So I can understand if you're independent, you can do all these things. Let me come and say and relieve you of those. You don't have to do those no more. I got you. But I don't want it to be a situation where I come in and you're like, well, I need you to do this, 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 and this, because I don't know how to do it. (laughs) (laughs) Like, well, you know, I may not know how to do it either, but let's learn. Like, it's, I, I look at it two sides. It's like I said, first to learn the act of service, but then look at it, it's like, I want you to be the best person, all around person you possibly can be. Mm-hmm. So and now when we come together, now I can bring what I have to the table and your table. Now you can leave this, put more energy towards these other things. I got this and I got this. What you're speaking so, to is two self-actualized people coming together. And self-actualization is when you've um, reached your highest level of like mm-hmm. personal, emotional, physical well-being and success. You come to this high level, you've met your purpose mate who's reached self-actualization, and now you have relationship actualization where you guys get to tackle the world together and uh-huh. rise to the occasion no matter what comes in front of you. And uh-huh. I, I, I love what I'm hearing. Isaac, when a woman though is in need of something. So when she does need something, because now I'm just curious now, because just because you brought that up, her love language is acts of service. She doesn't have time to, let's just say, wash her car. Mm-hmm. Baby, can you wash my car? I'm, I'm, I'm work in the morning and I don't have time to do it tonight. Will you mm-hmm. provide that act of service, even mm-hmm. though it's not something you want to do? And she Most needs definitely. it. Most definitely. Okay. Most definitely, I'd say it's it's. There's a difference when somebody says, well, I never knew how to wash my car or I never, or I don't know how to get my car washed. 
It's a difference. Do I use soap? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like this is difference. And I'm not looking at you like, okay, you know that. So, and I know people can misconstrue this. No, access stuff is like, I'm totally that type of person. If you're talking to me personally, I'm the type of person where I would just handle that probably anyway. If you ask me to do it, yeah. sure. It's also a way to ask. I understand it don't change your relationships, but like, do that. Yeah. How do you? How do you? Ask I mean, some. I mean, somebody. I mean, it's just a. There's different ways. Like you can ask like that, babe. Like you said, babe. I got this in car. Do you mind washing my car for me? It's perfect. You know, whatever it may be. Some people come out like, dang, you don't ever wash my car. Or why don't you ever wash my car? And then you like, hmm, <laughs> okay. You know, that's not playing into the. I guess where it could be saying like, babe, you know, I love it when you wash my car, mm -hmm. you know, like that or, or something of, of saying it into the, the words of nature. But that also depends on the man you're dealing with. I know I'm a man of, of words of affirmation. I mean, you have to build me up. But when you tell me I'm doing something for you is a good job, it makes me want to do more. Ooh. And that comes from the athletic side of me. But it's like it tells me it makes me want to do more for you when you kind of build up affirmation. And it kind of becomes a game. I had to learn acts of service, so I understand it more. It's like, because it wasn't a big thing, but I know if that's my spouse or what I'm dealing with, that's their love language, and I know I need to fill that tank up in order for them to feel better about themselves, and yeah. then everything else falls in line. But I had to learn that later. A lot of people aren't learning that's why we just button, button heads and we cut stuck in gridlock, because like, well, why don't she don't want to have sex with me no more? Like that, because maybe her love language is acts of service, and you haven't washed the dishes one day, or just yeah. or washed the clothes for something of that nature. So I, I don't know, I get caught well, up in it sometimes. It's okay, I know we're, we're very passionate people, but yeah. to the point that you just said right now, which I love that you touched on, that's probably gonna be the, the outtake clip that I put on social, because oftentimes uh, women and men both come to me at The Spicy Life and they don't mm -hmm. know how to speak to one another, right? Mm -hmm. Man, maybe masculine, woman, maybe feminine, but they don't know how to talk and get the message across and get their needs met in the relationship because something as simple as complaining about something not being done versus saying, you know what, Bobby, I appreciate when you get the car wash. Um, mm -hmm. It'll help me a lot. Can you get, can you get the car wash tonight? You know, yeah. I, I love when you do this for me. It really, it, it makes me feel so cared for. Yes, I can wash it myself. However, I don't got time. And I would love for you to do sure. this thing for me. When we give you the affirmation of the positive versus speaking to you in the negative, we are more likely, and this is in the workplace, this is where, this is with your kids, this is from whomever you are trying to, whether it's business or personal life, get something from. When you give the affirmation and you speak to them in a positive way of assurance about what they do great, you're more likely to get that need met. And you can still be right. direct with it, but give that affirmation so part to it versus complaining about what hasn't been checked off of the to-do list Instead, being like, let me tell you what you are amazing at that satisfies my needs. Um, and right. yeah, I, I kind of need you to scratch my back tomorrow. Like, <laughs> sure, it's, it's more yeah. of it's what we call you know petting the dog. It's giving giving that positive affirmation and the appreciation that follows it up. Because if you go and wash the car, then we have to let you know how amazing that made us feel after you did that act of service, right? It's not enough that you just go do it. Now we also have to affirm how good it made us feel and how much we appreciated it. And then later on reciprocate in when you see a need being met, now the belly gets rubbed. Right. And so <laughs> it does. It, it keeps you, it keeps but you doing, getting our needs met. <laughs> but you know, I feel it's a lot of people that will listen and be like, well, dang, that's a lot of work. I gotta appease this person. I have to try <laughs> to rub their belly like that. Sometimes you're not in the space to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, so you look at it as that what's what is it? Um, I don't have any, what's it? Uh catering emotions uh -huh. sometimes you come in i don't have any catering emotions i don't i can't really cater to you right now yep. in that type of capacity but and i say that is that you know you know like dang somebody listen to me. i got to tell him how good he washed the car why don't he just wash the car he the man he should just wash the car man would be like well she should just be cooking dinner when i come home i would like to have dinner made mm -hmm. i mean why is that you know she's the one because where you come from yeah but what's happening is there's an expectation yep. and you want an action to happen of what you just expect and you never had the conversation with that person in a way that they could receive it, and y'all could understand one another, or saying like, okay, that's what you like. You make a request. Yep. These are requests that I may be asking. And if a person can't fulfill the request, or not get putting effort to fulfill the request, mm -hmm. then you do have to reevaluate, you know, whether this is my person, yeah. or is it not my person, or, or whether they're capable. They may be they capable. Of. 
Yeah. They may be incapable of doing those things, but it's also when you start learning that love language, then you say, okay, well, for my baby, I know her, her thing is, <laughs> is acts of service. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to wash the baby. I got the dishes tonight. Why don't you just go and relax? You know, or, you know, I'm going to wash the clothes. I'm going to load the clothes in. You got something? Let me, let me do that for you. And it doesn't have to be something every day, but it's just making a point to do it a certain time in a week. But that's that having an interaction with whoever your spouse is. And that starts with being true to yourself first, but then also saying, hey, can we have a heart to heart conversation and talk about some things so I can kind of get to know you? And, you know, so sometimes you got to go on, but sometimes when a person doesn't know themselves, they can't tell you they love language. They can't tell you what they want. Right. They just expect. And then you sitting there just kind of going all over the place trying to do all different things and you're not hitting the bullseye. Yep. And therefore it's still causing, you know, a conflict. Yeah. And that's what happens is we run ourselves rampant and crazy, not getting our needs met because we don't know mm-hmm. how to communicate what our needs are. And we don't even know why we need what we need. We just know mm-hmm. that it's something we desire, but not understanding where that need is even coming from. And if you take the time to do the self work, you will assess, is this a need or is it a want? And is it a want yeah. that society told me that I should be wanting yeah. and I don't really want that's that big. thing? Is it an expectation that, and I love this example of roses, right? I do this intentionally. Mm -hmm. I buy myself roses because I love roses. Uh, It's the highest frequency of a flower. Uh, I used to be an orchid woman, now I'm a rose woman. My husband is not a romantic person. However, Mm -hmm. he does pay our Amex bill that the roses comes from. (laughs) (laughs) All right. I realized that he's working crazy hours and that buying me flowers may not be on the top of his priority list. However, he uh, repairs the car. He gets a car. He does all of the other like masculine energy mm-hmm. things. When it comes to the romance, though, I am have become responsible for that. But I understand what his cup can handle. I understand where he flows in his success. And yeah. I will at times overcompensate for there being a lack thereof. While at the same time showing him, I can do it for myself. But now you know what color I like. Now you know. Now you also get to witness me doing it for myself. And when you decide or think about it, there you go. But what I will not do is come home and say, you don't ever buy me flowers. Right. I took my butt to Trader Joe's. I didn't even get an expensive pair. I took my butt to Trader Joe's and bought some beautiful flowers. And now I'm yeah. happy. Versus yeah. being mad that for the good. last three weeks, I hinted yeah. around... Ooh, today is a beautiful day. I wish I could smell the roses. Like instead of doing all these things, circling around, getting a need met that I really wanted because I wanted yes. to prove to me how much he loved me. I just went and bought my own dang flowers. And exactly. I'll probably get a something else for him to show me that he loves me, the foot rub or whatever, however he, you know, shows me. Right. It's more about can I do it for myself? And is this an expectation because society says I should be showered with flowers? Or is it something that I really love and will I do it for myself? That's big. That's a good one. That's that's huge. I definitely can relate and see that for sure. That's, and it makes it challenges because we do we do this to you guys. We put you up in a corner sometimes yeah. and we're like, prove your love to me. Prove that you are a romance, you know, prove that you can, you know, create the passion. But as women, we have a responsibility to create it as well. And women, uh, this is mind blowing and foreign to women when they are like, wait, I'm a part of the courting process. Yes, you should be courting yourself and showing him what you like, showing him that you will do it for yourself so that one, you can even learn and see, can he mirror this behavior? Does he love me the Mm. way that I love me? Because Mm. if I don't love me hardcore, if I'm not buying myself roses, if I'm not capable of taking myself out on a hot date, if I'm not making me time, if I don't uh, go on my vacations with my girls, how is he going to now mirror that behavior? I don't do it for myself. And we're not living, so unfortunately, in 1930 anymore, no, where you guys did everything for us, where it was 100% you guys, and we just got to live yeah. our best lives, like taking care of the family. Like Times have changed, and we kind of need to update our mentality when it comes to, which is why I wanted to do this episode, Straight Talk No Chaser. I wanted women to see that like we play a role in our relationship to success, and studies do show that even when it comes to being in a healthy relationship or finding love, we are more likely if we approach you to have a more attractive man because we get to select what we are attracted to versus waiting on what comes up to us. Studies also show that we are more likely to be in a relationship if we communicate and create an opportunity because to your point earlier, it it creates accessibility. It makes Mm -hmm. you less intimidated 
when we create an opportunity for you to know that, hey, we're approachable. Speak to us. Eye contact. Eye, eye contact. contact. Just look in a position, positioning yourself. Like those are things that say the green light is like, hey, come talk to me. You know, it's like it's, it's, it's one of the biggest things that I even look for because it negates all that, that the unknown. Yep. Like the unknown could be attractive and cool like that, you know, just out of, you know, like, oh, I don't know, you know, just approach, pop out of nowhere, how you doing? And like, oh, you know, but the eye contact with somebody you kind of, you know, staring at you, interested in, lets you know, like, hey, I'm approachable. Come talk yep. to me. And I think women really need to use that um, more often. Sure. I uh, crack up because sure. I laugh because when we start to realize or find as our truth that romance mm. is just an illusion <laughs> that you create, we will be yeah. so much happier in life. If I want to create a moment between you and I, if I wait for you to create that moment, I'm going to be mm. waiting a long time. If you didn't see me in the room or you haven't uh, acknowledged, you know, that like I'm even accessible. Right. But if, right. I want to speak to you. I'm going to come talk. I'm going to come create the opportunity. I'm going to come talk yeah. to you and I'm going to just walk real slow and create whatever my definition of magic is. <laughs> yeah. There you go. If there I, I, I want to feel, if I want to feel magic. that romance, <laughs> if I want to feel that romance illusion. <laughs> yeah. 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 You got to use the illusion. I was like being a magician. You got to use it. <laughs> but, but both, there's two studies that have been done. Okay. Cupid and the league and both found mm. that when us women take control of our fate of our destiny of our romantic lives we have a higher level of happiness in our relationships and a higher level of success and i know it sounds crazy which is why i want to hear from you do you like when women approach you or do you only want to be the approacher no i i, I enjoy it i mean no matter if i'm attracted to a woman or not i have so much respect for a woman because i know what it probably took for her to even come and do it um and it you're also, I mean, it automatically a, says confidence right there. Is that what you're saying? It says, it says confidence. <laughs> and and that's right. I've been approached by women who I wasn't necessarily attracted to, mm -hmm. but I still would entertain the conversation. So the conversation would still go on. But, you know, when it came down to it, I mean, let's face it. Sometimes I've given my back in the day, I've given my number out just because I just really appreciated the fact that it, it did. And but yeah. now that I'm older, it's like I may not give my number because I don't want to waste that person's time. But I will be in a way of the conversation where it's like, like, you know, I appreciate you even approaching me right now. Like, you know, that says a lot about your confidence. And, mm -hmm. you know, I appreciate it. It may not work because I'm just, you know, whatever I'm going on, whatever I say at that time. But, you know, hey, you want a drink? You know, something like that. Like, I, I'm, <laughs> Ooh, so they like, I'm you know, too? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm like, I feel appreciative to it, you know, and it's, you know, but it's just un as real. A lot of. A, Go ahead, say it. Attract women. No, nope, you. I I'm told saying you a lot, a lot, a lot. Now I say I told you, a lot of women that I'm attracted to mm -hmm. have not really approached me. Mm. It's like it feels like the the women that are deemed, you know, really attracting. I can't say. I, I, I'm not trying to separate like the women. All women ain't attractive, but the women that are deemed so so attractive, or that I would be like, oh, she's attractive. She's oh yeah, wow, that aren't the ones that are approaching me. It's interesting because guess what? Women say the same thing, Isaac. They're like the mm. attractive men who we really want don't come up to us. It's only the men who aren't as attractive. And when we say the word attractive, we're not talking about your spirit, your energy, your essence. No. We're talking about what society may deem as attractiveness by social standards. Sure. Um, and so just, just to be blunt and real with it, it's unfortunate that that is the perception or that that's the experience that people are having because now you have these two groups of population that people deem as attractive, not speaking to one another and not coming up to nobody, just waiting for somebody to come up to them. And Did mind you, also you think that time, go ahead, I'm go sorry, ahead. finish. That, no, what was your question? No, finish. No, it was, I was just say it's so, because it's also so opinionated. So it's like some of those attractive women are saying, oh, the attractive guys don't approach me. Yeah. But the guy, it's like maybe because they don't see those guys being attractive. <laughs> but, you know, so, so, you know, it's, so, it's such an opinion of the nature because it's, it's like you're saying, it, it is weird. Like, okay, attractive group over here. And now they're just not approaching one another, whether it's because they feel like somebody's supposed to approach me or the intangibles yeah. that you've talked about. But it's so opinionated, so that's why it's, yeah. You're, you're right. It is a preference. It is based on what you deem attractive. Because what my girlfriends deem attractive isn't necessarily, let's just say, what I deem attractive. Even what my clients mm -hmm. deem attractive. Sometimes I set them up with people who they are like, 
he's so attractive. And I'm like, I would have never thought in a million years, but you love right. what you love, girl. And that's right. why it's so important, you know, to learn what your tastes are because right. it makes me even better at my job. It is all, you know, specul it's speculative, but mm -hmm. you, what is attractive or not. And so when it comes to is speculative, the word it's, what is it when it's, it's, no, it's not speculation. Uh, what it's uh, your particular taste. What's the word when it's your particular taste? It's based on your perception. Particular taste. Yes. Dang it. <laughs> I always forget. <laughs> I always forget this word. It's your preference. Your preference. It's your preference. Your preference but there's taste. another yeah. word for it when it's based on a bias that you have of your taste. And someone's going to DM me this or shoot me a message in my, um, in my, uh, my podcast. Yeah. One of my listeners is going to be like, you were looking for the word. Da -da 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 -da. Um, Appreciate that. But uh, yes, thank you in advance. Um, but when it comes to your opinion, right? Also, your energy can shift. You may not think that a man or a woman is uh, a, a 10 when they're first walking up to you. But the closer that they get, the conversation that you have, you will start to potentially find them more attractive. I will say that it's mm -hmm. the reversal for men. You guys, in order to fall in love with someone, have to be... A, as physically attracted to them through and through. But for a woman, if you show us love and cherish us, yeah. we can find you more attractive. So mm -hmm. it actually is a reversal in the level of priority that you guys put on physical attraction. Mm -hmm. However, modern day women, we want our cake and eat it too. We're like, uh, uh gone are the days where you guys just provide for us. We don't need that 100% full and through anymore. What we want is 50, 50. We, we want the attractive plus the provider plus the security plus the passion we want it all now hmm. and we and and look i will help you find it all if that's what you if that's what you guys want you got to do the work got to do the work because right, we, right. You, you people do feel entitled to having it all but you can't ask for it all unless you are all unless you know how to create passion you can't ask for passion unless you are romantic with yourself unless you love on yourself unless you take care of yourself from a physical standpoint if you aren't working out don't ask for someone who's working out so it's like mm -hmm. you need to be operating from not just the physical component but a higher level of vibration and consciousness even when it comes to your spiritual component of what you're asking for. Don't ask for a man who prays and you don't pray every day. Don't ask for like, it right. is this, like you have to be in alignment with what you're asking for. I think it falls in line of people setting standards that they're not willing to meet themselves. Yep. So you have all these standards, but you're not willing to do the same thing. You just want that person to do it. And then you just want to be able to reap the benefits of it and feel like that's just going to fall on you. And I think that's, you know, I mean, some people, you know, then those in those type of relationships and they flourish, but for me, that's never been something to me. I rather I have standards, but I try my best. It's like a, a mirror effect. Like I want, if I'm working out, it's because if I work all the time, I want you to work out because now I can look at you, you motivating me. Right. If you're a go-getter or you motivation career driven, and I'm looking at it like, okay, let me get up and do something myself. So it keeps me gr uh, grinding and it keeps me pushing as well. You know, it's like somebody being sleeping in the bed, you get up, you're like, damn. Right. Wanna, get your butt up. I want to go back to sleep. I, mean, I, I want to go back to sleep too. I got to get up, you know? So it's like, you know, sometimes like that. But I think, you know, we have to, people have to realize that. And it's also what stage in life they are in, I believe. I'm a, I'm a realist when it comes to a lot of things. Like some people just not ready for certain things. They got more living to do, more life they have to live. And well, you know, more learning. There's this notion though, when I say straight talk, um, I mean, when I say, are you the tequila or the chaser? Mm -hmm. I am the tequila, but... Okay. I'm also a hunter for a living. So I do chase, I do go up, I do approach people all the time because I am matchmaking and because I am relationship coaching, I understand right. that I can't have a new client unless I start a conversation. But sure. what I can't do is just pray and wish for a client and I'm not willing to go up to them. And so if right. we translate that into dating, right? We want this phenomenal mm -hmm. man to just realize and acknowledge and recognize that we're the one, but He's qualified to be maybe our husband, the father of our children, but I won't even go speak to him. What does that, like, I'm going to just leave it up to chance and fate and hopefully that you see us versus me taking matters into my own hand and going after what I want, what I may have a great conversation with, what I may, and all it, and I keep pushing this because women are so stuck in the, I don't want to be the chaser. I don't want to be the chaser. You're not chasing. 
it, it's not that you are hollering, hey, let me take you out for dinner tomorrow. I'm going to keep reiterating this to you, ladies, until we get this, that you can't ask for something you're not even willing to go do for yourself, to go do sure. on your own. And if it's 100% his responsibility to create the love and the passion, we are, so we are doomed because leaving our love lives up to just the men. <laughs> You are. Y'all aren't all equipped. You're not equipped for that yet. We're far more no. advanced light speed, light years ahead of you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sure. It's the wish you would have thing. You know, like, I, you know, I wish, I wish he would have, or I wish I would have done this and that type of thing. And I, I feel is that, you know, a woman, I feel like she, she can be, even though she's the, she's the category of the chaser, but she's kind of like the tequila as well, too. Yeah. Because everybody's looking for a different brand. You know, like, you're like, oh, I like that tequila. I like that tequila. So you present yourself as tequila. It's like, hey, I want to try this tequila here. Right. I like, you know, Fortaleza better than I like Don Julio or 42, whatever it may be. And it's like, you know, in some of these tequilas, you don't have a chaser. You just sip on it. So you know, <laughs> if you look at it that way. So, but I, I think, yeah. I love that flip. I love I, that flip. I, yes. So I feel as though you, I totally agree with you when you have to take things in your own hand. But it's like we talked about earlier. It's just positioning this eye contact. It's yeah. positioning yourself to be the, the, the player, the tequila, in a sense. And then the guy will come over. He will chase in that aspect. And I think the, I think you need to be versatile in both sides. Yeah. Both, the, both sides. When you're versatile in that, then you can – because the roles will change. You know, the guy will pursue you, and he just happened to pursue you because your presence. But don't think that you – you know, it was how you – it was the self-build, the self-talk, things that have, you already build and I mean, stronghold your own self that attracted that man over to your universe. And over to your area. I'm gonna do part a whole, of it. I love it though. I'm gonna do a whole episode on uh, just flirtation, just how mm-hmm. to flirt. Like when you're in a location, yeah, even when you're in the dating apps, how do you flirt? Are you on any of the dating apps right now? Mm-mm. No. Okay. No, no. Have you ever been? Uh, I tried. I tried one. Uh, uh, just as recently, and I was like, just. Mm. I'm just, it's not, I didn't feel like it was for me. A lot of people say Like, I was like, yeah, like, you you do it, do it, do it. And it's like, man, there's a lot of fake stuff on there. And I was like, yeah, I'm cool. I'm more of an interaction type person. I need to be able to kind of talk. I I know it's how they're supposed to use and get rid of the small talk, but I can do that in person. But it does, it does. I get it it, because Yeah, I like to, I like to have, I like to converse because that way we can, I get to know you better. And I'm like a bunch of texting and all that. It's like, okay. Eh, I ain't really gonna do it because it gets misinterpreted. And I'm the type of person I want to be able to converse and have a conversation with you. I get to know you that way. Part of though what the apps do though is give people an opportunity who would not go up to each other in person or yeah. chase or be the tequila, right? Um, mm-hmm. And I love the analogy that you gave of like, man, you can be the tequila without having to chase, right? Because nobody wants someone mm-hmm. who's thirsty. Don't get it wrong. I'm not saying that sure. you're giving off the perception that you're thirsty. You're creating opportunity once again through and through. I'm saying mm-hmm. this again, you're creating opportunity. Yeah. When it comes to the dating apps, though, there is a certain method of communication that you don't want to stay on there for long. Your entire relationship shouldn't be on there. But most people don't know how to communicate and flirt in a way, even on the apps to sure. transition you to a phone conversation, to a Zoom, to a FaceTime, to an in-person <laughs> date. So of course you're gonna feel defeated when you don't know how to communicate yeah. someone and let your light I, shine on there. I see that because some of the profile pictures, I'd be like, really, is that, is that your come get it picture? <laughs> is that, I mean, what are you doing? <laughs> like, you picture like, oh, it's blurry, are you kissing a dog in his mouth, or are you doing something like that? That's oh, your come I've get it picture? That too. Like that's the too. one supposed to attract, but you know, I'm just so, I looked at that, but honestly, it was an awakening to me. It was like, okay, this is what's kind of out here. This is who's, you know, on this this dating app, and you just have to sort through. It's like, once the stores, it's kind of like a Marshalls, though, because it's like you got to go, stuff don't be always put up the way it's supposed to be, so you got to try to find stuff. So it's like a bunch of swiping and trying to find things, and you're like, oh, that's dope right there. You find it. It's not even in the right section, though. (laughs) might have to be the best, like, analogy I've ever heard of the online dating is like a Ross or a Marshalls. Oh my God. That is so true. Yeah. You have to like pick through it and there may be like a diamond yeah, in there. You may yeah. find like that bomb little shirt or dress that you could wear, but you got to go right. like a thousand pieces first. It's not even a right section. It's not in the right. You found it over <laughs> somewhere else and it wasn't even where it's supposed to be at. So yeah, it's, it's like that. <laughs> okay, that's it. I'm posting this entire episode on IG Live. Like, everybody needs to hear all of these little nuggets that you're dropping. But guess what, though? 
Even if you go into those places, you're still going to catch a deal. But you got to believe that you're going to get a deal to go inside of Ross and Marcos. You do. That's why people go. That's why people go to Ross and Marcos. It's like, I can, I'm going to find something in here what I need. That's just, you know, that was the fight for right now. But once you go so, in there, though, yeah. and to your point, because you said you don't, you're not really crazy about it. I love them. I use the tools all the time for my clients mm. because I understand during COVID, not everybody's still attending the workout classes um, that we do, like Edgy Train Fitness. And sure. not everybody is as huge of communicators or even have the time with work of creating opportunities outdoors to meet someone right now. I'm using these tools on their behalf and also teaching them how to be more effective on there. So I love them, but I'm also a master communicator. So teaching yeah. those skills and how to be more effective on there, actually you see a difference in how many dates you get I and totally how much more effect, but it's similar to your, you know, going into, you know, Marshall's is once you know what you're up for and you know, okay, I'm going to have to shift through this section of this sh- section, or this is my budget. This is my price point. This is when I'm going to, you know, leave mm-hmm. the store. You're able to have a, better level of expectation so that you can be through it quicker. Right. You have a game yeah. plan in store yeah. and it, it does help, but you got to walk through the store first in order I, to yep. create that opportunity. So I love this I, that you're giving. Um, I, I could, I'm so happy that you came on the show and we're just able to give <laughs> the male perspective um, when it sure. comes to being, you know, the tequila or the chaser. And I want people to be able to, uh, you know, find you and I'm going to have you give all that in a second, but you have to close out, with the naked truth and that is you telling me that if you could travel back in time 10 years ago bear your soul right now 10 years ago what advice would you give yourself what advice would you give yourself to your love life then versus your love life now hmm 10 years ago i was right in my early yep i was right around 30 early 30s i would give myself i was going through a rough point that time because a big transition in my life I would give myself um, the advice to forgive myself, to relinquish any guilt that I feel like I've had um, from anything that I've done. Um, and to, at that point, honestly, really work on myself, but invite any experiences, good or bad, because I'm gonna learn from them. Mm. So I would say, don't be so hard on yourself, um, relieve any guilt, but Learn from all your experiences. Yeah. Learn from any experience that are coming and use them in your growth as you continue to move forward. Okay. I love that. Yeah. That's beautiful. It's kind of deep. Yes. And you date, are a deep date person. All the women. Date, date all the women. <laughs> Wait, all the I sex think. you want to have. <laughs> uh, yeah. Enjoy, enjoy life. Happy. Live life. Don't let life live you. Yeah. Yeah. All That's that. hilarious. Uh, definitely advocate <laughs> of like, enjoy your time, like get out your system hey. so you're not what it should have could have later. Uh, no. But when you are ready, be intentional because there's a game plan for that too. Um, it let is. Us, let us know, Isaac, where we can find you because you're single right now and um, focus. You're not single? <laughs> I am. Oh, okay. just, it was funny. You said it like, oh, you put it out. There. Oh, well, Go yeah, ahead. because you know you what? I Isaac, enjoy what? Isaac is single and a great candidate. I had you at one of my phenomenal speed dating events, Computer Love. Which and was an awesome event. Thank you. You were a hot say. commodity too, um, oh, well, because it has to be the superior man, uh, the successful, beautiful, um, vibrant, <laughs> higher level of consciousness, <laughs> cares about his lifestyle, health, everything. It's the all encompassing. And so, you killed it on there, Thank but you. also let me know one, how open-minded you were, how powerful you were, um, how great of a communicator you were. And I want other men to be able to have that, to have you as a resource, to be able to hear from you and women to learn from you as well. It's, it's sometimes sure. people don't always agree with our opinions, but the more open-minded you are to diversify the information that you expose yourself to, the more enlightened you become. So I right. love that you wow. are very vocal about the insight in your experience that you've had. And I may have you come back for another episode on like, um, Please do. maybe yeah, I even want to do something. You, I want you to speak even more on like your past relationship. Like I'm going to dive deep with you because there's so many things I want to talk about with you, but for your podcast, mm. where, let us know where we can find you. If they want to slide through your DM uh-huh. or go on a date with you, uh-uh. um, <laughs> you guys can come hit me in, up. I'll, I'll, hook, yeah, I'll yeah. hook you up. I'll hook you up. Come on in. Where, where can people find <laughs> uh-huh. you at? Um, you can find me, um, all my, everything's Isaac Key. So my Instagram is Isaac Keys. I try to keep it all simple. Uh, not on Facebook too often, but everything's Isaac Keys. Um, the podcast, Straight Talk, No Chaser, is one that we've just been doing IG Live on. So some of the past episodes are on my IG Live TV. 
So you can go back and check on it. We did various topics of the very beginning of, you know, quarantine single versus quarantine relationship. What makes good sex? Um, interracial dating. We've right. talked on a lot of conversations and it was just really conversations, real conversations from two guys. And we would chime in with the people who come there on IG Live to just get their, you know, their feeling and yeah. you know, what they're saying and do it live. Um, also, that's pretty much Isaac Keys. You can find me on those things, but I want to commend you first off for filling that little, my little love tank up with all those affirmations. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you for that. I appreciate that. But I want to commend you on everything that you're doing because you are making a difference and you're enlightening people on things that they have not ever thought about because nobody teaches you this. Correct. This is like you know everything that we talked about with love and relationships has all been learned by trial and error or what yep. we saw, or what we expect, or what we think we're supposed to have, and that's why so many relationships have been you know in turmoil. Some are yep. good. Some are not, and then people feel like they're supposed to settle or tolerate. Yep. But when you have the conversation and you talk to somebody or you learn, like you were saying here, learning from you, then now you have more of a clear understanding of what's the reality of yeah. the situation. And then you have a different outlook on it. It's like, oh, Absolutely. I've been making this shit hard. This shit's really yes. simple. I'm making this shit harder than <laughs> what it has comment. to be. I'm the comment that I'm yeah. what. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So please continue to do on the spicy life, and thank you for having me. And yeah, anytime. Because oh. everything we talked about was good, but it's so much more depth to it. Oh my you know, God. So people I need you on here for like five that. hours to really Man, like, we can have a good conversation. I know. I'm gonna have you back for like a ton more episodes. I have to. Um sure. I love it. And thank you for being on today's episode. Uh you guys can yeah. always play with my Twitter or stroke my Instagram at spicy Madi. Make sure you download this episode, click yeah. and subscribe, share it with a friend who needs to hear this. Go to the spicylife.com. I'm available and a resource to you if you need some relationship coaching, magnetic matchmaking. Mm. And there you guys have it. You have just been spiced the spicy life